Hello and welcome to Prime Pro Video. Today we're going to be going through the process of setting up a new candidate. So first you come to the Candidates tab and then on the right hand side here click the New Candidate button here. This will open up a new candidate form. And the first field we can see is the NI number. So it's optional whether you enter the NI number here or not. You can always come back to any of these fields and edit them later, of course. So let's just start off adding our candidate. It's optional whether you put the uh, nationality, but I've just added that there. It is essential that you do put the first line of the address in, town and postcode. Those are the three items that's actually needed, especially if you're going to be linking to a payroll system. OK, you don't have to put, uh, you've got two numbers here mobile number is mandatory where you see the red asterisk that denotes the field is actually mandatory requires you to fill it in uh, next option we're going to be asked is whether or not they're going to be paye umbrella or limited company for their payroll method if you select either one of these three options you'll notice that the information below will change so for example we've got the option to view and edit the employee statements if in the permissions and access rights you've switched this off, then this won't be visible. Uh, but of course it's needed if you're gonna link it through to our payroll system, Prime Pay. Umbrella, the employee statements disappear as you've noticed, and you can select here your umbrella. So this is from your list of umbrellas that you've set up in the uh, system settings. And the third option is limited company, where you'll notice it's now shown the limited company field to you to fill in. Two required, obviously, the limited company name and number. Uh, that number, if they are VAT registered, would go in there. This will then trigger, obviously, a VAT uh, self-bill invoice if they are indeed VAT registered. So either way, so I'm going to make this person PAY, actually. Payment method backs. You can choose to select whether apprentice or not. And I've got the payroll number here to be inputted manually. It's your choice as to whether or not you have the payroll number in the settings set to automatic. Um, in my demo system here, it is manual. Um, bank details, obviously this has to go in here because uh, we've selected the payment method backs. The options to put consultant rating can come later. Proof of address and password are also options for you to upload there. Save. So now that's saved the initial part of the record. Next stage is going down this list of uh, items here you'll notice at the top there's a red exclamation mark which is indicating that they don't meet general compliance which we'll come on to in a minute uh, so any of the information in their primary details if you need to edit it you click the edit button here next option is medical uh, if you do require an occupational health medical questionnaire to be filled out for some jobs as an agency you might deal with then you've got some great questions here already pre-formatted for you to use. So remember to go through the list and click save at the end if you're going to use it. Then we go through the preferences uh, general is the next one. So uh, at this moment in time, we it's default to mobile. Very useful if you're going to be sending job invitations and of course uh, confirmations via text. If you wish to switch it to email then of course they'll get those uh, options via email so i'm keeping it as mobile for now the unavailability calendar so when we come in here um, you can choose different options day week month i like to see it on a month view personally uh, i can then cycle back and see when they last worked if i wish to enter any unavailability so you can click on the day you want and that opens up the unavailability window where you can put the reason, holiday, whatever it might be, sickness. Uh, you don't have to put a name in here, that's optional. And then you can do a date range. So if they were away for a period of time, or you can use a pattern of unavailability if they're unavailable every Monday between these dates. Uh, so click save to that, and then that will show as a blue unavailability uh, option here. If they were booked out, uh, it would show as green and it would say what booking they're on, which is quite useful in this calendar. 
client requests so let's go into there what's this well after they've registered and we place them in work it might be a situation where a client doesn't want this candidate to work for them again if that does occur then obviously you would come in here put the date select the client in question and maybe put the reason why and you can choose from one of these four reasons client requests so um, no show not suitable serious incident and then you can record it in there this will then take them out of the recommended candidates list when using them against the booking in the future to save obviously any embarrassing situations where you're inviting them to a job where the client doesn't want them back skills okay so under the skills these are our categories that i've already set up in my agency my demo agency here and i can choose any one of these to add the skills that i think appropriate to this candidate so for example if i click the edit button here on the right hand side for hospitality that opens up the skills relevant to that and i can simply select yes he's a pot washer or she is in fact if we go back we can obviously choose some of the other skills so if she also um, was involved with driving skills then we can choose class one here and then that would indeed require me to add qualifications later for her to appear so we've added a couple of skills here it's really easy to add so click the edit button you can select and unselect so if you've made a mistake it's just as easy to remove as it is to add click back there um, general compliances so i've set one general compliance up in my demo for rights to work you can have multiple ones so general compliance means that if you haven't added anything in here for this general compliance then they won't be able to work full stop so it's an overarching compliance requirement for you to be able to use this candidate so clearly i have to set it up um, and it will remove this triangle at the top when i've completed it so let's just make a date here choose file so this gives me an option to choose a supporting document to this compliance so let's use a uh, passport save we can download it and view it anytime we like thereafter which is really good for reference purposes if we need to edit it for any reason you can click the edit button and then obviously edit the um, the general compliance there next we come up to qualifications which are linked to skills you need to click the new qualification button on the right because of course i added her as an hgv1 class one driver so let's in drop down and i've got three options to add so I start off with driver cpc and then you can add the cpc save so now you'll see i've added this qualification so we've got the driver cpc that's the date that it expires and you can download it there so as with general compliance if i use sadie for a driving job and the cpc is expired then she won't show up as an option under that skill if i search for her as a pot washer under the skill there's no actual qualification for pot washer so she would appear under that as long as of course the general compliance is up to date so that's the overarching compliance and as you can see the red triangle has disappeared indicating that a general compliance is now up to date which is great so you can add any further qualifications if necessary which are skill based relating to that particular skill that you've set up so add new so if it was a dbs or childcare skill or anything like that then you can add them to their record then we come on to category questionnaires um, i've got one questionnaire configured in my system which is to do with driving so i would need to click the update and then i would fill in the questionnaire accordingly so a lot of these are actually file uploads which i've made as part of my questionnaire such as copy their contract application form health assessment equal opportunities etc the other fields may be text fields um, you can create date fields uh, pick lists um, multiple choice check boxes all sorts which is really really handy for you to uh, capture all sorts of additional information that is specific to that category so obviously it's only appeared because i've selected a driving skill so any other questionnaires that you set up under different categories so if you've got one for hospitality and catering then you might have a different set of questions that you ask there 
again very very clear and simple to use and uh, make sure that you're capturing the right information for the candidates ratings uh, ratings to add simply click the new rating on the right hand side um, date added and then choose your client simple five star rating so similar to ebay in that regard and of course when it comes to uh, filling and searching i can then filter on ratings later on which is again very very handy work history so to add work history uh, is previous workings before they come to register with our agency where do they work um, anything notable worth adding and indeed it's very easy to fill these boxes in so you select if they're an existing client that they worked for so happen to then you can select that or other which will then give you the option to type in the client name job title description of duties start and finish date and then you can also add their referee details so this will automatically when you fill in these boxes click reference request save that will then automatically put that as a reference request item on the dashboard for you to be able to send that reference to the referee for them to complete online uh, then we come down to timesheet history so this is going to show you where they've worked before so if i go to candidates where i've uh, got marcus here we can see in his timesheet history where he's worked and it's most recent at the top so we can see that he worked at aldi uh, being his most recent job which is basically actually worked was the uh, 17th of november when we look at the top here you can filter so you could say uh, when did you last work at tesco assuming he did yes he did you can see he worked at which particular business unit uh, so in this case northampton store worked as an operative nights and you can see that he did 33 hours and it was obviously the night rate if we view this we can see what he got paid so uh, 396 pounds working 33 hours nights at 12 pounds an hour we can see the charge rate as well so click uh, at the top you've got two ribbons to quickly access from effectively his work history which is in effect his timesheet history uh, references so when they come back uh, completed by the uh, free they would be available here for you to download a copy of it and ultimately you can add notes so here we've got some notes so to add a note click new note put the title and the details and then it date and timestamps it so this really concludes the input of the candidate record really really quick and easy and from the candidates tab you can easily find a candidate by uh, start typing in their name so there it is that's how you enter and create candidates i hope it's been helpful please like our video and look out for any more Thank you.